All right, everybody, today's a big day. Kind of excited about this one. So you know we've been working on the Jeep project behind me here, my uh, personal project, our 67 Kaiser Jeep, and you know, getting our floorboards installed and getting all this stuff fixed. So that's all good. Uh, if you watched the previous in the series, you might've seen where I repaired the bed that used to be right there in the shop. That bed is now out there. So what I did yesterday, we had a great day here, uh, great weather, so I took it out and I sandblasted the entire bottom of the bed. And I didn't go to metal, uh, I just wanted to abrade the surface so we can get it ready for paint. And this was all in preparation. So remember, I'm a machine shop and fabrication shop, we don't paint, okay? This is something I'm doing personally for my truck, and this truck is gonna be a woods truck, all right? It's for riding trails, going over rocks, it's not gonna be a show truck. So functionality, but I just don't want it rusting out. Okay, so with all that said, sandblasted yesterday, today we're gonna prime the bottom of this guy. And we're gonna prime it using Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal Primer, we're gonna spray it, and we're spraying it outside. So the, the big reason today is such a big day is that it rained like crazy last night, but it's supposed to be almost 80 degrees today. So we have all the dust being kept down. So I'll be able to wet down the lot here and spray the primer on the bed, and we're doing the underside, so not that big of a deal, but uh, we're gonna spray the primer on the bed and have it done so then we can turn it over and prime the other side. Once I get it in primer, right, we'll be able to put some paint on it, yes, but I can get it out of the shop. The, the main reason it's been sitting on the floor is it's been all winter long. I don't have a paint booth, I don't wanna build a paint booth, and I couldn't get it outside to paint it. So now we have the day. 80 degrees today, rain like crazy last night, so we're gonna get it out. First thing we're gonna do is pressure wash it. Uh, yeah, I know probably not the greatest idea before paint, but we're gonna pressure wash it, put it in the sun. Uh, and that's basically to get any little bits of, I keep finding blasting media in crevices and I found a few mud dauber nests that still were there. And I just wanna make sure that stuff is out of the bottom. So we're gonna stand it on end basically, uh, pressure wash it, let it dry in the sun while we get the paint mixed up and get all that stuff ready. And then we're gonna shoot the primer. So let me go and get positioned for all this stuff, get the bed set up, uh, the whole deal, and we'll come back with probably a time lapse on this one. All right, thanks everybody. So we got it off the hoist, we got it onto some uh, saw horses. I'm gonna go over and uh, start the spraying process. I'm probably gonna take the can and brush inside some of the harder to reach areas, the internal areas where I can't get the sprayer up into, and I'll do that first. But what I wanted to cover is the primer that I'm using. Let's see if you can see this. This is a Rust-Oleum Red Oxide Metal Primer. It says heavy duty, weather resistant, rust preventative, the farm and equipment stuff. Um, this is really a good primer, it really is. Um, I don't know that I'd do it like on a classic car restoration, but quality for outdoor components, it's a really durable, great primer uh, overall. And uh, they have instructions for thinning it, which is nice. It can spray anywhere from 25 to 60 PSI, I think it said. Um, and uh, what, uh, oh, 15% acetone. So you can thin it out to 15%. And I was really surprised, this primer is very thin. I probably could have sprayed this without even thinning it, uh, but what I wanted to do was have a, ho a hotter primer. I wanted a, a quicker flash. I didn't want to wait all day for this to dry. Uh, you know, it is going to be almost 80 today, but that's the peak, you know, so we're probably 60, 65 right now. So we'll go ahead. I'm going to get the can over there. We'll get it opened up. We'll get a brush, uh, brush some of the interior pieces, and then we'll start spraying. So I'm probably going to reposition the camera for that. We're kind of far away over there uh, and let you guys get a better view. So I'll go ahead and get this part started and move the camera, et cetera, et cetera. So. All right, so here we are. We got our uh, primer mixed up, thin 15%. We got our spray gun ready. Uh, we're running a 1.4 tip. Uh, the PSI I haven't adjusted yet. We're gonna basically shoot on this paper and see what we end up with. So let me go ahead and grab that. 
And uh, one of the things I like to do is I start with acetone first when I'm adjusting my fan spray. It gets me really close without wasting a lot of paint. So let me go ahead and grab some of that and we'll do that to get it dialed in from the beginning. Then we'll switch to the paint and we'll dial that in for the last little bit. Okay, so here is the uh, semi-finished product here. Overall, the uh, paint laid down well, the primer did. Um, you know, I use a cheapo Harbor Freight gun, so that is what that is, and we did it outside. So that is also what that is. And I'll show you what, what we did with that is, uh, there's some dirt over here. But you can see it's on the surface. It's not actually in the primer itself. That just kicked up while we were going. What I'll probably do when we paint the, uh, the top, the other side is wet down all of this area that way we don't have dust kicking up right near here uh, but overall the uh, primer came out pretty nice hope it comes out on camera can't tell if you can see that it seemed to cover pretty evenly it definitely wets out really nicely I like it it, um, it levels really nice it's a pretty good primer the dog should be talking to the camera where we're having a fit so uh, we're gonna let this sit it really takes eight or nine hours before you should handle this so it's just gonna sit here in the Sun for the afternoon and then we're going to lift it by these four points with the hoist and just take it back inside and leave it hanging until it fully dries and then we can turn it over and we'll be able to do the other side. Morning everybody. Uh, here we are again with the truck bed. Uh, we primed the bottom last time. We're going to flip it over and prime the top side. So I haven't done any uh, sanding, sandblasting except where body work was done. So we're also going to go scuff this whole thing up. Uh, there's not really a lot that's needed. I don't think I need to sandblast much on the top side. It's in pretty good shape. So we're going to go through and flip it over, uh, sand it, uh, I'm going to use a palm sander, I'll show that when we get to that step, but this first piece is going to be getting this turned over. So here we go. So it's getting a little cool, warm with the jacket on, but it's still pretty cool here. But uh, here's what we're gonna do. I got my palm sander, and basically it's all flat surfaces on this thing, and all I'm really doing is roughing it up so the primer will stick to the other surface. So what I've done is I've got some scotch bright. I just cut some scotch bright to fit, fit the palm sander, and we're just gonna go over-scuff the whole thing. With doing that, uh, obviously got my hearing protection, but this is the one I really wanna mention is this, the respirator. Modern vehicles, you probably, you should wear a respirator all the time, I guess is what I'm getting at. But old vehicles had a significant amount of lead in the paint. So as you're going and scuffing this, that paint is going to get atomized and in the atmosphere, and you're going to breathe that in, you're going to be breathing in lead. So, you know, wear a respirator when you're doing anything like this, sandblasting, sanding, uh, anything, especially on an old vehicle or an unknown finish where you don't know for a fact what it is. But these old military finishes, yeah, they had lead in them. All right, here we go. cleaned off as much as possible uh, and tilted a little bit to let the water run off. Now we're just gonna wait for the sun to come out and do the rest of our work for us. And once that happens and it's dry, we're gonna shoot some primer on it. 
and this piece will be ready to at least be in storage outside the shop. We'll tarp it and put it off to the side for now. But that'll be a big amount of space back in the shop. Alright, so, here we go. I'll pause this and come back when it's dried out. Alright, so as you can see, we've uh, tilted to let the water run off. Blew it off with some air, checking for water and some small gaps, and it's mostly dry. There's, I'm not really seeing much come out, so we're going to go ahead and just let it dry a little bit more. But while that's happening, I'm going to go ahead and get it uh, put on the uh, sawhorses for painting. Just about time for more paint. So we'll pause this, we'll make up the paint. There we go, quick two minutes, got some more primer mixed up. Let's go hit it. There we have it. Whew. One primer to bed. So, step one of 600 million steps. So now that we've got it in primer, once that dries, we'll be able to put a tarp over it, store it outside for a little while just to get some more room back in the shop. So we'll do this. We're probably going to wait a week or two, weather dependent, and shoot some paint on it, and then it'll be ready for permanent life outdoors. Oh, so that's the whole thing. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.